Welcome. And so there are two main aspects of photography, the aesthetic side and the technical side. Some people are good at the aesthetic side and some people are good at the technical side, but rarely do we have people that are really good in both the aesthetic and the technical sides of photography. So today we're going to take a look at one of those sides, which is composition. I've broken composition up into three main areas, and then each one of those areas, I've kind of broken it down just a little bit more. And hopefully I'll be able to explain the three different ideas that I'm talking about. Let's take a look at them. Number one, rule of thirds, which is a simplified version of Fibonacci's number. Now, if you have no idea what Fibonacci's number is, don't worry. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. Number two, we're going to have image balance. We're going to have positive space versus negative space. And in number three, we're going to have image movement, how the eye moves through the image. So we are going to go back in time and we're going to take a rule look at rule of thirds. So what is rule of thirds? And we're going to bring up some information here. So what is rule of thirds? Rule of thirds is basically Fibonacci's number or the golden ratio. This is Fibonacci's number. This is the golden ratio. Basically, mathematicians were looking for a way to mathematically identify beauty in human nature or in nature or in the world. This is the mathematical equation they came up with. So there's going to be a lot of people out there that do not understand this equation, and that's perfectly fine. What we need to know is that this equation equals 1.618. Now, the problem with 1.618 is if you told somebody, hey, the perfect composition would be if you divided your image up by 1.618. Well, people literally couldn't do that. So most people would struggle with trying to divide an image up like that. But if you simplify this at 1.6, that comes out to one third. So if we just simply tell people to divide an image up into thirds, that's a whole lot easier for us to manage and look at in an image. Over here, we have Fibonacci's number. And we can see here that basically the point kind of spirals down and goes into this little point right here on a third. But notice this is broken up into thirds just like this. So here we have a third and this is two thirds. We have two thirds here, one third here, one third this way, two thirds this way. So in essence, Fibonacci's number or the golden ratio are very similar to each other. And we're gonna use this aspect as compositional rule number one. So we have this picture of this goose. We have some lines that are divided up into thirds. The thirds go one third, one third, one third, or one third, one third, one third. Thirds can even go at a diagonal. So you could divide this up into this third and then two thirds over here. A lot of compositions are either going to be symmetrical in which you have a third over here, a third here, and a third here, or asymmetrical where we're using two thirds versus one third. So this is an asymmetrical composition. The crosshairs are where you want your subject to lie. So notice the eye is right on the crosshairs and that could be here, here, or here. Now, this is true in a lot of images, but sometimes the third can just simply be this line or this horizon line or this horizon line like we'll see in our next image. And sometimes rule of thirds, it's not hard and fast. Sometimes because of the image balance, you need to push the image this way a little bit. And in the end, when we take a look at some images, we will get a glimpse of that. Our next image is an image of this landscape. Notice that the sun is in those crosshairs. But what's important here is this foreground. So we have this grass and it's on the first third and the sky is on the top two thirds. In this image, this area is gonna be more dominant than this area. We could have also moved this up to this third. So we had two thirds of the ground and only third of the sky. I personally prefer when I do landscapes to have the third down here. The second rule we're gonna take a look at is image balance. So we have positive versus negative space. Positive space being the subject and negative space being the background. I brought up this image of the dog. In the dog, the subject is the positive space and the space around the dog is the negative space. 
almost all images need negative space around the subject to balance them out. The next example I have here is the fisherman and notice how small the fisherman is. He's the positive space and we've got all this negative space around this little teeny bit of positive space. So it, you don't have to have lots of positive space. You can have just a little bit of positive space and a lot of negative space. What you will find out is a lot of times the negative space can actually be more important to the image than the positive space. The next aspect of image balance is symmetrical versus asymmetrical. So a symmetrical photo is going to be balanced. What you see on the right side is exactly what you're going to see on the left side. So they are symmetrically balanced. Here we have asymmetrical. So we have this building and it's on the left side or the left third of this image and it is balanced or putting the weight over on this side. We are having two thirds here and one third here. This is an asymmetrically balanced image. The last rule we have is image movement. And the first aspect we have here is repetition or rhythm. So we'll take a look at repetition. So here we have a bunch of blueberries lined up symmetrically and they're all the same. And so it's easy for our brain to look at and understand this image. The next version that I have over here is we have repetition in the light and the structure of this building. And the repetition is leading us through this image. So notice image movement, how we move through the image. We're using this to lead us through that image. This is really important in photography. A lot of people don't see this when they look at photographs. A photographer should definitely understand how their image movement is affecting their image. The next aspect of image movement is perspective or leading lines. So we'll take a look at this image. So the perspective is leading to this area here. The leading lines are leading to here. All these lines are moving our subject's eye to this specific point. We are controlling that and it's really important in photography that you're using perspective in leading lines and then having your subject be at the end of that point or along that point in the image. And this one we've done it a little bit different. So here we had sort of a symmetrical image. This we have an asymmetrical image. So we are using the staircase and stairway to lead us around to a specific point in this image. So we are using leading lines or perspective to move our eye to a specific area. So what we're gonna do now is bring up some images and take a look at how composition affects those images. This first image we're looking at is an architectural photo and we can see we have a vignette here. So what the vignette is doing is it's pushing your eye towards the center. Notice that it gets darker to lighter and it's giving us sort of this circular movement and we have pattern and repetition and we're coming into this symmetrical photo right here in the center. So the viewer, the, the photographer is leading the viewer's eye to this point. The next image that we have here is of this bike. It's using strong perspective lines to move us through the image. We come, we see the bike, and then we move off into the horizon line. This is really well done. Traditionally, you do not want your horizon line right smack in the center of an image, but because this bike is sort of on the third, we're gonna let this go and say it's okay. This next image, we have this bird, and the bird seems to be on this third, which would sort of make sense. But in this case, there's a whole bunch of different issues. If we look at the eye, it's up too high. So there's not enough space up here. This should be down closer to this third of the image. The bird is also looking through the short side of the image. The bird is looking here and then down through this way or through this way. So it's looking through the short side of the image. What that leaves is a bunch of what's called dead space, space that's not really useful. So this is negative space all around here, but this isn't useful negative space. Basically this bird, if you were gonna have the composition of him, he should be looking this way through the long edge of the photo. Or if the bird is here, we want the bird over on this third looking through this image. 
We also have this tree and this tree is way down here on this bottom edge. And this is not the place we want this. We would prefer that that branch intersects right here on this third and has a really nice movement dividing this frame up. So this is too bottom heavy. So this part of this image is bottom heavy. And then we have this kind of stuff here. This looks like pine needles and that's just basically distracting. At first glance, this looks like it's a pretty good image. So we have this cross, it's on this third, it's on this third. But what we have is also some leading lines. So our leading lines are pushing us to here and pushing us to here and bringing us down to here and bringing us down to here. So is this the area that we're supposed to focus on or is it this? So basically we're coming in here and moving up, which is a little bit odd. Usually you don't want the focus point of your image to be down here on the bottom of your image. You want it here or you would want it here. I'm not a big fan of the leading lines on this image. This is a asymmetrically balanced image. It's good as far as this vertical third, basically dividing this up, putting this on the third. The problem, my problem with this image is there's just too much weight down here on this image. I think this needs a little bit more foreground and we need to sort of push this up and move these leading lines to a more ideal spot. So this is something that happens with beginning photographers all the time. And this is super easy for me to look at. We notice we have the horizon line in the third, and there's two huge issues with this. Number one, horizon lines should never go through your head or neck and never cut off appendages. So you do not want to cut off feet. You don't want to cut off at the appendage, the ankle, the knee, the elbow, the wrist. So really watch that you do not put heads and horizon lines, and you don't cut off appendages in the wrong areas. So here's a good example of pretty good composition. So this is your S curve, which has been in a compositional element in photography for hundreds of years. So we're moving this way and then it moves back through here. So we're moving here. This is a classical S curve in the image. Notice that we're horizon lines right on this third. But this is a pretty good example of a well done composition and a really nice movement through the image. Here, it looks like it's just a beautiful light and a beautiful image. It's nice and simple. However, the horizon line is directly in the center. We do not want the horizon line in the center of the image. We want it on this third or we want it up here on this third. This is a good example of what I would call right heavy. Unfortunately, I don't know why this tree is dominant because it is not interesting part of the image, but because it's so big and prominent, they have this tree on this far right side and we have all this negative space. But what this image actually needs is negative space over in this area as like a buffer around this tree and maybe a little bit up here on the top. What we would need to do is basically move this tree this way and get some more negative space around on the top in the far side of the tree. So we can see all the weight of this image is over here and nothing over here to balance it. Also the horizon line is way too low. It needs to be up here. Here's a really nice movement and just so simple. So one of the aspects I say is just simple images. Keep it simple, stupid. Notice the background's just perfectly clean and we have this just wonderful movement of these hands and just soft shadows. This is just really well done. So this is up here on this third, even though it's in the center, I'm okay with that. Could you move it over here? Yes. Or could you move it over here? Yes. Most likely you would move it to the smaller child's hand. So here's an, a good example of a symmetrical composition. So what we have on this side is what we have on this side. It looks like the horizon could be straightened out a little bit, but we're not going to uh, go too much into that. So notice that this is a third and this is two thirds. So we know it's about the building. So this is really well done. Here's a portrait of this woman and look where her eyes are right smack in the center of the image. You will be surprised, but you will see a lot of photographers when they shoot tight portraits, they'll actually cut off the top of the head. And the reason that they're doing that is image balance, but it's also moving the eyes up here onto this third.
though it's not a bad image, the eyes or the focus of this image is in the center and that is not where we want it. Here's an example of a beach shot under the bridge. So we're using repetition and with nice perspective lines leading us to a specific spot. But just like the other images, the horizon line is right in the center. We need that on a third, either up here or down here to make this image look better. So we have this nice clean picture of this dog. It needs more negative space. So see how we have some nice space over here around this dog, but we don't have any space here. We just need this dog to move this way just a little bit. But the big issue with this image is this busy background. A couple of different things. There's a lot of textures, there's a lot going on, and there's also high key light. Your eye is always gonna move towards the brightest areas of an image. So you're gonna look here and then look here, look here and look here. Whether you want to or you're not, your eye is just gonna move in that direction. So this has horrible movement in this image. Lots of lots of issues. Also, if we look at the dog's eyes, it's basically right in the center of the image. A lot of things going wrong. One of the things we talked about earlier in this was Fibonacci's number and Fibonacci's number can actually be found in nature. If we look at this snail, we have this sort of spiraling pattern moving down to here. And if you were to shoot this in the right direction and then overlay Fibonacci's number example over that, this would line right up. And this isn't the only aspect of it in nature. It, it shows up a lot. Here we have an asymmetrical photo and we have really nice movement here. So we're moving, we just moving this way. Everything's leading us right to this helicopter. The problem with this image is that our focus point is way up here in this top right hand corner. It's not in the place we need it to be, which is gonna be over here on this third. Too much weight or too much movement to this far end of this image. Is it horrible in this? Not really, but really I think if we could move it down in here, this would be a lot better in this image. Another example of a really clean, simple, symmetrical pattern moving us down centered right to the center of this image. Here's another example of an image with a whole bunch of issues. So once again, we have the horizon line right in the center. Um, we have this nice reflection and the light is beautiful and a lot of people would be happy with this image, but this is extremely right heavy, meaning all the weight is over here and nothing over here to balance it out. So remember, negative space is as important as positive space. Now we have lots of negative space, but it's in the wrong areas. We need some negative space over on here as a buffer by moving it this direction and this image is just gonna give us better movement and better balance in this image. So the big issue here is, is too much weight on this side. We're back to the beginning. Hopefully that was helpful. You learned a little bit about the different aspects of composition. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.